Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of uh, healthcare data, uh, and we basically have data from different countries during different years. Uh, and we're going to try to predict the average hospital stay for a given country uh, in a given year based on uh, some other factors as well. So let's uh, hop into the notebook. Um, I'm going to use a bunch of different regression models and then we'll compare the results. Uh, and I'm importing NumPy and Pandas just to work with the data and we'll be using the train test split function and uh, standard scalar from sklearn for pre-processing. So let's go ahead and import all those um, and we can load in the data using pandas uh, sorry pandas.readcsv. Uh, we can go get the file path up here. Here it is. Copy file path. Let's paste it in and we'll take a look. All right, so here's our data. Uh, we have 518 rows and only six columns, but hopefully this will be enough to predict the hospital stay. Um, and I'd also like to take a little more, uh, more of an in-depth look at the data with data.info. Uh, we can see we have 518 total entries and in each column we have 518 non-nulls, so no worries about missing values. Um, and we also have uh, a single object column and the rest is numeric. So we only have to worry about encoding a single column, which would be the location column. All right, so let's start pre-processing. Um, and I'm going to create a function called preprocess inputs. Uh, and that's gonna take in a data frame. And it's, sorry, df, and then it's gonna return uh, and that same DF, but after we've done some modifications. So the first thing I'd like to do is make a copy so that we're uh, not modifying in place. Uh, and then I'd, well, we can run this actually. Uh, so we have the data at the top, and we're gonna feed the data through this to get X. X will be our pre-processed data. So X equals pre-process inputs, passing in data. And X right now looks exactly the same as data, but now as we add things in here, uh, we can see the outcome. So um, I guess what we can do is deal with this. I mean, this is only the real big pre-processing step uh, since we know there's no missing values and everything is already encoded uh, as it needs to be except this location column. So how are we gonna deal with it? Um, so it is a categorical variable with multiple values actually check all the values by taking a, well we'll use x, x sub location gives us just this column and we can type dot unique to see a list of all the different countries. And so there's a good number. Um, so we're dealing with a categorical column with more than two values um, and there's no ordering between the values. So uh, this is called a nominal feature and the proper encoding method is one hot encoding. So we can use pandas.getDummies uh, and we'll pass in just this column to see uh, an encoding of it in a one hot form. So this basically just takes each unique value in the original column and constructs new columns out of it. So each unique value gets its own column. And then uh, the original value gets converted to a vector of ones and zeros where one, uh, the one, there's only one one, and it's in the column uh, that the example originally had as its value. So you can see we have all AUS, and then at the bottom all LTU. And so, uh, well, actually we can't see LTU on here. So I'm going to go into the console, type pandas dot set, set option, max columns, and I'm setting it to none. That way, we can reload this. Uh, and we can see all of the columns. And so you can see we have all ones for the AUS in the first five examples. In the last five examples, we have all ones in the LTU column. And that just corresponds to the original values of the column. So this is what we're gonna use uh, in our one hot encoding. So let's create a function called one hot encode. Uh, it's gonna take in a data frame and a column that we'd like to encode. Uh, we'll start by creating a copy of the data frame, and then we want to construct these dummies columns. So we're going to use pandas.getDummies like we just did, passing in this time any column, so df sub column. Uh, and then we're going to take those dummies and sort of uh, 
put them on the end of our data set. So we take the original DF and we concatenate the dummies on next to it. So we can do that with uh, pandas.concat, passing in DF and dummies, and specifying axis one to mean side by side. And we'll store that in the, in the new DF. All right, and then once we've done that, uh, once we've concatenated these onto the end of our data frame, we no longer need the original location column from which we created the dummies. Uh, so let's actually drop that, df equals df.drop column from axis one. And that will be it. Uh, then we just return df. Uh, so it takes in a data frame and a column you'd like to encode, and it returns that same data frame with the modifications. So with this function, we can now go in here uh, and apply that to our location column. So we'll say uh, one hot encode location column. Um, and we'll, all we have to do is call df, or we'll call one hot encode, pass in df, and location as the column name. I'll write column there so we know. Uh, and this returns a data frame, so that will be stored in df again. So now I'll run this, and x should be our one hot encoded version. So here it is. Uh, we now have 37 columns. You'll see the original location column is gone, and we have all the country columns in a one hot fashion um, on the end of the data frame. All right, so now uh, all of our data is encoded, and we know, again, we have no missing values, so all we have to do now is split the data and scale it. So we're going to split df into x and y. y is going to be a vector of our target values, in this case the hospital stay, which is what we're trying to predict. So y equals df sub hospital stay. Uh, and I'll make a copy of it. it might as well. And then uh, x will be the rest of the data what we're using to try to predict the hospital stay. So df dot drop hospital stay. And I'm dropping from axis one, which is the column axis. And we'll make a copy as well. All right, and then we're going to uh, do a train test split. So this split our, independent, our dependent variable away from our independent variables. And now what we'd like to do is take 70% of that data and put it in the train set and keep the other 30% for evaluating the model afterwards. So train test split. And 70% is, that's, that's a, a threshold that's really up to you. That's just like a standard value. Could it, could we, we could do 80%, 60%, doesn't really matter. Uh, but for this, we're going to use the train test split function. And we're going to pass in x and y. This function is from sklearn. And not only does it split the data for us, but it also shuffles the data before it does so, um, so that we don't have to do that ourselves. Um, and we pass in the values we'd like to split, and we can also pass in a train size. So I'll do 70%, like I said. And then because it shuffles it, I want to include a random state, uh, which will ensure that the shuffle is always done in the same way when we run this notebook. Uh, and that will return four new sets of the data, x train, x test, y train, and y test. So um, I want to return these guys instead of just df now. And I'll get them over here, and then I'll take a look at x train. So we'll run this, and here's x train. Uh, you can see we no longer have the hospital stay column, um, but we do have, uh, uh, but we have uh, split the data so that we have only 70% of it here. X test should contain the other 30%. Sure enough, um, and Y train is going to be our target information. So here's 70% of the target data. It matches up with X-Train. Uh, and here are the targets. So what we'd like to do now is scale X. So let's, uh, let's scale X with a standard scalar. So a standard scalar is just uh, one way of scaling the data. Scaling just means that we give each column in the data frame uh, a similar range of values. So that really improves the performance of many models. Um, and standard scalar will give each column a mean of zero and a variance of one. So let's actually do that. We'll create a new scalar object. And this will be the standard scalar from sklearn. Uh, we need to fit the scalar to the train set. 
So scalar.fit x train, and we're only fitting to the train set uh, because in, uh, it's a good idea to just do all your fits to the train set because we're actually fitting just the, we're fitting the model to the train set. So we're sort of like working under the assumption that we only have access to the train set at the time of pre-processing. And then we're going to return the transformed version of xtrain given by scalar.transform xtrain and the uh, transformed version of xtest given by scalar.transform xtest. So we're fitting the scalar to only the train set and then we're uh, transforming both the train and test set given that fit. Um, so if I return this now you'll see that this is actually a numpy array uh, so it's it definitely works. We could feed this into our model right now, but it's not so nice to look at. So I'm going to turn it back into a data frame, and I'll do the same for X test as well. So pandas dot data frame, and we'll include um, the column names because it it'll reset the column names if we make it a data frame again. And let's make the column names the same as X dot columns. All right. Now if we run this, take a look at X train. We have the original column names, and it's in a data frame format. So you can see all the columns have been scaled. Um, and if we take the means of each column, xtrain.mean, you can see that every mean, the mean of every column is extremely close to zero. And if we take the variances, you can see that the every variance is extremely close to one. So, um, right, okay. So we're gonna try to use this data to predict these values. So I'm going to use a bunch of different uh, models, uh, and I imported them all at the top. So let's go and see. Um, all right, I am just going to copy this in. I already wrote this out before, just a lot to write. I don't want to waste your time. Um, so here are the models. It's actually a dictionary. That's It's mapping a model name to the actual instance of the model. Um, so we can actually train all of these with one for loop using for name comma model in models dot items. So if you get the dot items from a dictionary, it will return the key value pairs as tuples, which you can then iterate through two at a time like this. Uh, and then for each one, we're going to train just the model, model dot fit on the train set, x train, y train. And then we're just going to print out a little message that says name plus trained. So uh, it'll take this name here and it'll say that has been trained. So we'll run this and you can see that all of them are being trained. And that was the last one. Uh, so we can get the results. Whoops, whoops. Oh no. I closed it out. Just give me one sec. All right, we can get the results over here uh, by Basically, we just iterate through each time and score the model. So if we call a model.score, uh, this function for it built into the sklearn estimators, um, this will return the accuracy value in, in the case of a classification task, and it will return the R squared value in the case of a regression task. So this is a regression task. So these are going to be the R squared scores. R squared is a measure of how dispersed the data is from our fit. So it's sort of a good way of understanding how well your model is doing, especially when compared to other models. Uh, you can see which is doing the best. So the way I'll do that is for name comma model in models dot items. Uh, we're going to fit the model. Sorry, we're not fitting the model. We're uh, going to print out the, the score. So we'll say uh, we'll use the name and we'll say r squared score and let's display the r squared score to five decimal places and then we'll format that with model.score x test y test so i'm evaluating the model on the test set and then returning it in a string with the name of the model all right uh, here it is so let me just run this through one more time so we get all the outputs uh, and all right we can see that it looks like XGBoost is doing the best. Uh, it looks like our linear models, the support vector machine and the linear regression, are not doing so well. Uh, K-nearest neighbors did all right. A neural network about the same. Um, actually, our, our 
RBF kernel support vector machine did not do so well either. Although, uh, I don't know, it looks like uh, Decision Tree did well, and then all of our ensemble models did the best, with XGBoost coming in first with an R squared of 0.97. All right, so uh, you can see that for this particular task, ensemble models did take the lead. Uh, and I guess that will sum up today's video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content. And leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.